the Sox did go out and perform the manager search that everybody seemingly wanted them to go and do. And, you know, there's my, my sort of thought behind this is, did they let the market pass that? That's my biggest question that I have with this early on is did they let the market pass them? We've seen the White Sox organization let the market pass them by in free agency and seemingly almost every other time uh, that they're out there. They're the last team to make a hire here. And this is a name that uh, did not get the job in Kansas City. Now, there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons why that may have been. It could have been. Pedro wanted this White Sox opportunity. He was just waiting to to close the close the deal on that. Um, it could have been that uh, the Royals didn't want him. Who knows? Nobody here on this show knows exactly what happened between him and the Royals. You brought up some interesting points. We discussed this earlier in the day uh, with the rest of the Sox on tap crew about uh, him being relieved of his duties back in 2012. There's a lot of history there, but my first question in this process is did the White Sox let the market get past them with some of the other available names that were here during this manager search, Steve, let's rewind the clock back a little bit and talk about who you actually wanted uh, as the manager hire here, Steve, Uh, was there a candidate out there that you wanted that the White Sox either passed on, did not interview or for whatever reason uh, wound up here with, uh, with Pedro Griefel? I can't really say that there was one particular candidate that I was longing for more than any other. I know I definitely did want them to talk to Joe Espada with the Houston Astros, which they did. And then they summarily dismissed him as a candidate uh, maybe was it four or five days ago uh, from that standpoint. I also wanted them to talk to Matt Corcharo, uh, bench coach with the Tampa Bay Rays, who interestingly enough is getting the job as the manager with the Kansas city Royals. Now to your point previously there, you talked about um, some of the concern about Griefel not getting the job, having been in Kansas city for as long as he has. One of the things that I feel like people need to understand with Crocharo getting that job over Griefel, the new uh, Kansas city Royals owner um, was a gentleman that previously had a minor, a minority ownership stake in the Cleveland Indians and he there, his path crossed Matt Quattraro when Quattraro was in the Indians organization. So there's a level of familiarity with there and perhaps the decision to kind of start fresh with that Royals organization, relieving Mike Matheny, um, relieving Dayton Moore and bringing in someone that the owner is familiar and comfortable with. Could that have played a factor in why Griefel wasn't considered or ultimately chosen to be the Royals manager? Who knows? But, you know, at the end of the day, there really wasn't a candidate, whether it's Bruce Bochy, uh, Joe Madden, Quacharo Espada, Ron Washington. Nobody really jumped off the page to me and said, this is the guy that is ultimately going to fix the White Sox. Because in my personal opinion, there are systemic issues within this organization right now. and a simple managerial change is not going to fix that. Fair enough. Fair enough. And I, I noticed that you left out one name there, uh, Ozzy Gian, who was also involved in some of this. I, I didn't have you pegged down as a, an Ozzy Gian guy. I uh, didn't think that you were going to champion that one, Steve. Uh, just didn't seem to be your style there. But uh, some other names that you threw out. Uh, in this managerial search. Joe Madden. I definitely did not want Joe Madden, although I do uh, enjoy some of the the Joe Madden uh, publicity tour uh, that was going on MLB Network and every single other, uh, you know, outlet that was out there that Joe Madden could get on. You wouldn't have been so you wouldn't have been excited for the uh, pajama party theme road trip. I mean, I'm all for I'm all for team bonding. Uh, but, uh, I just don't know if, uh, this White Sox team exactly needed a Joe Madden type, uh, manager. Uh, let's, let's be honest with ourselves here, Steve, for just a, a couple of seconds. I think one of the things that didn't go right 
with the 2022 Chicago White Sox was the fact that Tony La Russa let these guys kind of do whatever it is that they wanted to do and that there was not a lot of accountability uh, within the organization. So I did not think that Joe Madden was going to be the type of guy that could come in here and fix things by any means with the pajama party. I just didn't see that happening. Uh, Joe Espada, let's move on to Mr. Espada real quick, uh, Steve. I didn't really buy this one from the start. I thought that Espada was going to wind up uh, you know, back and staying in Houston and waiting for Dusty Baker to retire. It didn't really seem to make too much sense, although uh, I know he was a favorite amongst uh, a large section of the fan base uh, based on his baseball acumen and, and what he's involved in uh, with a perennial contender that is the Houston Astros. Uh, you know, any shock there that that deal didn't get close with the Spada? Um, yes and no. I think from the standpoint of, I struggle to understand why a top managerial candidate would want this job. Working for an ass backwards front office that really hasn't accomplished much in their tenure. I mean, let's, let's slow it just for a second here. I wouldn't say that the, because I don't think that the white Sox, even though they're not at the forefront of, of baseball, uh, you know, excitement right now, and they just missed the playoffs. There's still an interesting roster here that was in the playoffs just a year ago (laughs) and the year before that. So you sound like my you sound like my ticket rep yesterday trying to convince me not to cancel my plan. Well, we already know that you have canceled your your season ticket plan, Stephen. That's 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 already old news. I mean, there's still opportunity here for this ball club to be successful. There's still opportunity to come in and manage some exciting young baseball players, is there not? There is, but the problem is this. Too many things have to go right at this point. You're talking about guys that really have to hit their 70th percentile projections at least. And we're talking about having to count on the likes of Aloy Jimenez, Yoan Mancada, Luis Robert, Tim Anderson, and Andrew Vaughn to try and play 150 games in a season. That's a challenge that I would love to see them succeed in, but None of them have done it yet. So that's a big problem for me. Eloy has shown nice bursts of being an offensive force. He's also then followed that up by being a ground ball machine. Luis Robert can't stay on the field. Yoan Mankata finds his way onto the IL all the time and finds inconsistent offensive performance. Andrew Vaughn has not produced the power that we thought was in that bat to this point leaving a lot of us to kind of wonder how much did missing out on upper minor level pitching because of the pandemic stunt his development. These are all valid questions. There's too many things that have to go right at this point for this team to be a contender, in my opinion. And I feel fairly certain that a certain 86 year old human being is not going to just all of a sudden give them more money to spend now having missed the playoffs. So that gives me cause for concern about the direction of this roster going into 2023. I think, I think that's a certain 86 year old man may have, you know, uh, just really done a number on you over the years, Steve. Uh, There is no human being on this planet. And I say this in all honesty that I hate more than that man. You you just you've got a grudge. You've got a grudge. And it is we'll, not possible to hate someone you have never met more than I hate that man. You you've you've got a grudge. It's it's very obvious here. 